Welcome inside TCO Studios. The 10 and 2 Vikings are headed to Detroit this week to try and clinch the NFC North title for the first time since 2017. I'm Tatum Everett and this is Pick 6 presented by KFAN where we answer your fan questions. We find players, coaches, media experts to give us the answers and let's get it going with question number one. This is from Mike and this was a Twitter submission. He asks if there are official statistics for missed tackles. Was the Jets game the Vikings' worst tackling game? Well, Mike, we asked Vikings Entertainment Network's Gabe Henderson to look into this one for you. Mike, appreciate the question. Not sure if your last name is Hughes or Houts. If you're Hughes, I know you play for the Detroit Lions, but I think last game was not the worst tackling game of the year for this Minnesota Vikings team. I just feel like we played a little bit less aggressive in the second half versus the first half. In my opinion, the first half was Ed Donatel's best game calling for this defense. And um, if we want to continue to get better later on this year, I believe we do have to send more pressure, which will ultimately be better tackling, uh, better results for this defense going forward. But um, I don't think it was the worst tackling game uh, for the Minnesota Vikings this year. I'm not sure what was, but one, one thing I do know is this Minnesota Vikings defense will get better as time goes on. Thanks, Gabe. The defense, quite a popular topic of conversation in this pick six. And on that note, let's get to question number two. This is from Dustin. Dustin wants to know uh, in what ways can we improve our pass defense? Currently, it ranks 31st. Well, Dustin, we went out to our national expert and friend at CBS Sports, Brian McFadden, for his take. Dustin, thank you for your question. In regards to improving the pass defense from the Vikings, I think the most important thing they can do is tighten up their coverage. Oftentimes they play too much off coverage and that allows the wide receivers and the pass catchers to instantly create separation. So I think buckling down on the coverage standpoint, playing more bump and, bump and run type coverage will help them out. And oh by, oh, by the way, pressure is always a plus. So you can add more pressure as well to put, to, uh, to put on the quarterbacks. I think definitely that could help the Vikings pass defense. Thank you for your question. A big thank you to Brian, and as always, you can hear him and our very own Patrick Peterson on their podcast, All Things Covered. Let's get to question number three. This one coming to us from the Savvy Ninja. Great Twitter handle, by the way. They ask, why do the Vikings sit at 10 and 2, get coverage from the national media like the team's 2 and 10? That's a fair question, and we thought we'd this would be a great one for Voice of the Vikings, Paul Allen. Ah, the savvy ninja. How you been? Um, the, the answer to the question is who cares? I mean, if the national media wants to look at the Minnesota Vikings like a 2-10 and 10 team instead of a 10-2 and 2 team, who cares? In fact, it's, it's, it's even better to, like, lay in the weeds and sneak up on teams. And maybe some of these ballyhoo teams around the NFC will be watching this national coverage and they'll be like, ah, the Vikings are terrible. Uh, by the way, when we played on national TV against the Eagles, we got killed. And when we played in an afternoon game, a majority of the country saw against Dallas, we got killed. So I understand what they're seeing, but they don't see the totality of it. We do, Savvy Ninja, and we know this is a very, very good squad. Thanks, Paul. I know we are excited to hear you back on the call Sunday on KFAN. And speaking of that Sunday game, it's against the Lions, as we've already talked about. And who better to get next on pick six than TJ Hawkinson? There was a big question for him from Brian this week. He wants to know, how much have you or will you talk to the defensive staff and players to help them game plan against the Lions offense? We caught up with TJ. Take it away. Uh, yeah, Brian, I, uh, I'm going to try my best to, to help uh, these guys as, as much as I can. Um, you know, I know a lot about that offense and um, I know a lot about the people there. So we'll see, uh, you know, I, 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 what I can remember at least. If you want to hear more from TJ, I sat down with him earlier this week in an interview that will air in Fox 9's Game Day Live Sunday morning at 9.30. On to our next question. It was a special request for Pete Bursich, the Vikings radio analyst. It's from Amber, and she wants to know, Pete, what is your assessment of our defense to this point? What do you make of the fact that we have two of the best pass rushers in the league, but one of the worst overall pass defenses? Pete, your answer. 
Amber, thank you for the question. My assessment of the defense, really, uh, it's been outstanding situationally, right? Consistency hasn't always been there. But in certain situations, this defense has really, really performed, especially last week in the red zone against New York Jets. Now, the two best pass rushers are having two of the better pass rushers in the league. How does that equate? Well, let's put it this way. Yeah, we're giving up yards, but it's the plus eight in the take give. It's the turnovers. We're fourth best in the league at taking the football away. That is where the pass rushers are showing themselves in the box score for the Vikings defense. Thanks, Pete. You can hear more of that great analysis on the broadcast Sunday on KFAN. We've got one more question to go in. This one was a Twitter submission from Latrell. She wants to ask Dalvin Cook a question. So we found Dalvin in the locker room after practice and asked him, how do you continue to find motivation and pass it along to your team when you all are faced with long drives and come up short on a play? I think you'll like his answer, Latrell. Just knowing that we get the opportunity. Like, if it's the end of the game, yeah, obviously the game over. But, like, if it's still time left on the clock, we know we still got the opportunity to go out and prove ourselves again. So it's just delivering that message and just passing it along with great energy. You know, that goes a long way. So it's just, just knowing that my team has got my back and, and we got each other back. I think that takes us you know, more than people know and to levels that nobody ever know. And that is why Dalvin Cook is one of eight finalists for the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award. That does it for this edition of Pick 6, your chance to ask players, coaches, or media experts questions. We'll call for your fan questions in another two weeks when the next edition of Pick 6 presented by KFAN comes out. Skull Vikes.